Right. So I think we get the right solution in that they they tend to flatten out, right? All right. Any questions about this? Yes. It looks like oh the boundaries has blown up. Yeah, I think I set the flux to zero, which may not be the right thing to do. Okay. So, right. So what happens is that on the left hand side, uh, the flux is uh, the flux is equal to half, except for the very end point where I set the flux to zero. On the right hand side, the flux is equal to half, except for I set it to zero. So what happens is that the flux would keep going into the very last cell on the right without ever leaving, and also flux is constantly drawn from the very first cell on the left and never uh, come in. As a result, the solution blows up at the boundary. So let's, let's set the flux at the very end to be the same as what comes in so that the solution wouldn't blow up. And uh, let's try again, u equal to u0, close, and let's evaluate. Uh, right, so this time no solution is going to infinity, uh, except for the last two cells that I think they stay at minus one, one because I essentially set the DDT to be zero, right? Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's the good enough scheme for solving conservation laws. And maybe it's time to talk a little bit about what boundary condition is appropriate, right? So the boundary condition we can assign is basically uh, depending on the characteristics. So, so if the characteristic is going out of the boundary, there is no way we can assign any boundary conditions, right? So if we assign a particular boundary condition, just as if we did a moment earlier when we set the flux to zero, the only thing that will create is uh, accumulation of flux at the boundary because one thing, the flux is going out and uh, uh, the, right, so, so basically, the information only propagates from inside the boundary towards outside the boundary. There is no way the solution in the inside can even know that you are imposing a boundary condition. So what can you can create is basically only numerical. Well, the correct place to place a boundary condition is when the characteristics are going from outside the domain to inside the domain. Then you really need a boundary condition for the solution inside the domain to know how to behave, right? So uh, that's, right, so, so the boundary condition is when you have t and x. So let's say this is the boundary of the domain. And if the characteristics are moving into the domain, you have to assign boundary condition here because otherwise the solution here wouldn't know what value it should be because the domain of dependence actually depends on the boundary condition. On the, other, on the other side, if the characteristics is going out of the domain, then you cannot impose any boundary condition here because it wouldn't affect the solution inside the domain. You would be only creating numerical uh, artifacts along the boundary. Okay, that's a short discussion on how you should treat the boundaries. Okay, any questions on that? So okay, so the what the flux should be on the right hand side. What you are notice, what you notice is that uh, the flux should actually be computed from the cell in the interior, right? So what I should be setting here actually uh, is uh, I should be instead of setting f at the end, I should be setting f int at the end. I should be setting f. Right. So, so this is the this is the flux computed from the first cell and the flux computed from the last cell. 
So if I if I set it like that, uh, I th think I think I wouldn't. Uh, I, my end solution would also be decreasing. So let's let's see. So after this uh, spreads to the end, uh, yeah, you can see the very last cell decreases, and the whole domain would be decreasing as a result. Okay, so that's a uh, that's how you should be setting the flux at the boundary. Just uh, because the characteristic is going out of the domain, the upwinding direction is actually the cell inside the domain. Okay. Good question. <laughs>